Councillors, welcome to the ordinary meeting of our entire council for the uh, month of March. I declare the meeting open. Councillors, um, Warren Chai Council acknowledges the traditional owners of the lands within the Warren Chai and acknowledges the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who reside within the Shire. Councillor, I call for apologies and leave, leave of absence from this meeting. The general manager has four of those. You might just announce the manager. Uh, Councillor Taylor, Van der Donk, Kinsey, and Willow. So I'm happy to move those apologies and leave of absence. Councillor Driss, happy to move. Councillor McCloskey, second. Put that all over the paper. Yes, carry it. Three items on the of our agenda, which is the confirmation of the minutes of the last meeting, last ordinary meeting, on Chai Council held on Thursday, the 22nd of February. So I'm happy to move those minutes to an active record of that meeting. Councillor Jackson's happy to move. Second, Councillor Whiteley. Councillor Jackson. I move that the council accepted as an accurate action information. Thank you. Any amendments required for those minutes from councillors? I mean, nothing will put that. All those in favour? Yes. Carried. Item 5, our identity disclosures of interest. I believe we have no disclosures of interest. Mm -hmm. one, 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 uh, I believe an insignificant non particular mm -hmm. interest. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just to clarify for my fellow councillors and members of the community, I have previously declared an interest in the airport, um, airport operations committee, um, but I don't feel that anything in the minutes being presented today gives rise to an interest requiring me to leave the room. Thank you. No, thank you, Councillor Derrick. On five, uh, on six on our agenda is the mayoral minutes. There are no mayoral minutes. Moving on to item seven, reports of the committees. The first of those meeting of the Water and Sewage Committee held on Tuesday, the 5th of March. Recommendations there in front of someone. Happy to move the recommendation, please. Thank you, Councillor Bruce. Happy to move. Second, Councillor Walker. Councillor Bruce. Um, I think I'll just pass that one over to the general manager of the Council Committee's exit today. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Um, so, what, um, Mr. Mayor? <coughs> The main recommendations relate to the integrated water cycle of management and, and the funding of 10 per cent um, that of approximately, approximately $600,000 and that's a major strategy document that will set us ready for the next 30 years for both water, water and sewer and, and that will hit us also to try to get as many grants as possible. Um, this, there's, complication of grants um, of, of trying to get money for, for example, the <coughs> proposed uh, new new ball water tower, uh, standpipe reservoir at, at Ball Flat and things like that. And of course we're just making sure everyone knows that we're actually monitoring the conditions and water restrictions imposed by everyone else um, um, as we we haven't seen a dry period yet by just the grass growth, but it's coming. Um, I think we just should note thank, thanks to Councillor Kinsey for stepping up um, with the passing of Councillor Higgins. Councillor Kinsey has become chair of that committee and that's appreciated. I know Councillor Kinsey's not here today, but uh, very much appreciated that he steps up into the role as chair of that committee. Any further comments, questions regarding the minutes of the Water and Sewage Committee meeting? Nothing okay. further, we'll put that all those in favour. Yes. Carried. Second report of our committee's meeting to show you the race force committee on that very same day. Councillor Bruce, you're happy to move. Second, Councillor Whiteley. Councillor Bruce. Um, yes, I'll hand over to Councillor Whiteley, who's acting chairman in my absence. Thank you, thanks. <laughs> Mr. Whiteley, you can make it. Mr. Mayor, a well, um, a well attended showground meeting, uh, <coughs> um, which uh, updated the uh, progress and just about finished of the new toilet block. There was discussions on uh, uh, combined organisation of approaching. Uh, Race in New South Wales, re uh, funding of the 
that's uh, fence. Um, uh, there was some uh, discussions between the race club and the pony club and uh, uh, about access across the track and some discussions on uh, uh, the disability access uh, around the site. And uh, if the gentleman if he needs to comment on anything else, uh, I'm happy for him to do so. Mm -hmm. I I went out a couple of times to have a look at the um, the camp club, camp 15 or 17. I, I think I actually asked uh, uh, Stephen Stephen Christian to uh, do do those drone shots, which are all on uh, Facebook now. It's fantastic! I just can't believe um, some of the rigs that people turn up. It was really well used. In the end, I would say there were actually three organisations there at once. Um, Central West Adult Riding Riding Club, and a fair amount of family club stuff going on in, in Canberra. It's fantastic use of, use of the place, the way it's supposed to be, and let's hope we get to see more and more of it. Um, um, I had, we had some comments that they've never, never ever seen the place as well as it, it's been for ages, and everyone was pretty happy. Um, I had to go, the reason why I went out a couple of times is, is um, we we think we've now got the lighting system everywhere completely organised, but it just wouldn't want to work properly. The last couple of events, so I, I was helping them turn the lights on in the arena, Preston Arena, to get them right. Um, and hopefully, I've had a practice in the last week or so. I've turned every light on properly from my app, um, meaning, meaning Carter Oval, the Preston Arena, and, and Victoria Victoria Oval. So we're close to getting. If I can use the the app, um, was close to um, having it almost perfect. <laughs> um, I, it rained Friday night, and I think they made the decision to to block everyone off and not use the rubber map stuff, and and, and, and everyone went the long way, um, which I think because they they you could just see it from the drone shots, you can actually see the marking. We don't want to mark up. Um, the, the racing, the, the jockey club, because uh, horses ball cat as they go past the thing. Um, we, uh, there's a panning organisation starting to take form, um, and um, we have to actually work out, they, they actually may want to use the arena, um, and, and the, the subcommittee has said, let's not have uh, several several types of use, one of them for the first 12 months. When they want to do it, it's just outside the 12 months, so they actually want to start talking to, to, to them because they actually have to work out how they're going to clean up after presentation of cattle and those types of things in that arena, and, and they actually have to be trained how to use the equipment, otherwise they, they can't use it. Someone has to be capable of knowing what to do. <coughs> Uh, both watering, gator, and, and cleaning up the facility. Um, so, but that's interesting, and, and a, a, a tent, a tent building organisation coming along. Um, that's about it. Um, I think there's some, still some improvements to the PA system coming, but I, I was out there and heard it was working as well as, well as I would hope. Any anybody here? Any? any? So, uh, Mr. Crew, Mr. Mayor, I can hear that PA system from my bedroom, <laughs> two kilometres. Okay. So, as long as it was, uh, this was the on the ground. So, as long as the the uh, reliability is. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been on it a couple of times. And, uh, sat, sat in the grandstand and watched the watched the campground for a while. And it was it was working. So, any questions of any sort regarding the limits of the Jago Race Course Committee there? Nothing further, we'll put that all over the data. Thanks, Gary. Committee of the Airport Operations Committee held on the 6th of March the following day. Someone happy to move that. Councillor Darnell is actually. Councillor McCloskey is happy to move. Thank you. Second, Councillor Walker. Councillor McCloskey. Uh, no, three years to me. Um, just a couple of things at the meeting that were uh, on the agenda. The, uh, the main thing, 
you spoke about the terminal building, and I think if you drive out to the airport now, you'll you'll see a building well in progress. It's the frames up, the roof sheeting's on, windows you know, inside, size of laces around it, so it's progressing. Another industry that came to light at the meeting was the aerodrome manual, which is a necessity with regards to the operation of the airport. Uh, it's a work in progress, a document that we amended and it's been asked for uh, Ralph Smith, Brett Williamson, Pat Holm have a close look at the manual, maybe maybe refine it a little bit and make it a little bit more user friendly in terms of Warren Aerodrome. Um, but glad to see that eventually there is light at the end of the tunnel in respect of projects that are incomplete out there and then hopefully within the next say couple of months the finalisation that will be done and we'll have uh, everything everything completed. I did speak to the chair of the committee, Councillor Mikoski, and he was um, very positive about the future for, for the infrastructure that's being proposed out there. There's also very positive about the operations manual and the fellow who is the consultant who's been engaged to get an excellent job in getting to where we needed to be. It's, it's pretty in depth, um, but it's it's necessity um, with regards to the operation of the airport. So, yeah. Just for council information, um, apparently the, the Air Force dropped in in Hercules. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. flew right over the top of my place the day before yesterday. Yeah. Anyway, they no, <coughs> conveyed to me that they're looking for places to do a little bit of training, and which they did our greatest bit. Yeah. Um, but he made inquiries about the terminal building now that it's under under construction. Oh, we might be able to do a bit of training here. They down the place of the business like Kajogo. So the general manager may make will make contact with the airports out of Richmond. We understand that that's where they came from, and maybe we encourage them. Welcome or without no, no. Exactly. So source of revenue. Yeah. So and then so it's it's amazing. So if we get this infrastructure in place, then it's amazing what may happen yeah. if the infrastructure is there. I'm on the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pleased to see that things are progressing. Yeah. Finalisation is close. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Morrison. Yeah, I'm just putting this down. Just wondering, um, it says that the taxi way mm -hmm. might be able to handle the bigger planes. Yeah, if RFDS moves on to these king E's. What is there? Is is there someone in the room that knows how much work is required to? I still investigate. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But just, I think, if I may, yeah. just say, it the the. the Royal Flying Dock to fly to B200 King Airs. If they were to go to a B350, which are a bigger King Air, the taxiways in the current format aren't wide enough, aren't big enough. And nor would the runway, 0927, be structurally big enough to hold it because if there's a paper concession on the runway of 5,700 kilos, and a 350 King Air is heavier than that. But in light of that, Proposed work in the future will see the runway upgraded, so you don't need a pavement concession, or the rating on the on the runway would be increased to accommodate a 350 King Air. Okay. No. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Councillor for that. Excellent. Any further comments, questions, information, sort regarding the uh, airport operations in the meeting? Further put that all those in favour against carriers. Meet the internal audit and risk management committee held on the 6th of March. Councillor Derrick, you have to move that. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. Councillor Derrick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Riveting, thank you, as always. Um, I'm going to defer to the general manager or divisional manager finance administration for any questions. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Um, there was a lot. There was a lot to discuss, but some. Yeah. Um, this this um, might be the last um, um, internal audit and risk management committee in the format that it is. I'll, I'll, I'll report hopefully to the April meeting with what's noted for um, from the first of July. We we still might try to get one in, but from the first of July, it really has to be uh, an independent chair. And, at least one, maybe two independent members. Um, a councillor may be a member but non-voting. 
to the, uh, uh, the, the divisional manager, finance administration, and, and general manager are members but non voting right at the moment. The, the, uh, the two, two elected reps, uh, mayor and deputy mayor, are voting members, but not anymore after the first of the seven. That's one of the reasons why we want, want our local member to talk to the Minister for Local Government because every time we, we've had that discussion with the Minister for Local Government, he thinks that taking away some of the powers and, and oversight by councillors um, is no good. And this is exactly what happens. Uh, we even, even our internal auditor has said this is just this is going to cost you so much money and time and resources for the next version. We are as if we are a $350 million Canterbury Banks Town Council. That's, that's what it's like. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we, we, we are hoping that if nothing changes, there's a chance that we might be able to share with someone like Noel Reynolds maybe have an independent chair that we have to pay for and a GM and divisional manager finance administration of each. Uh, and, and we used to be like that with the old version at Cobar and the Warrener. And we're hoping that we'll be able to do the same, but not 100% certain. But the GM and Bill Reynolds is most interesting. That's all part of future reporting. Um, we we um, would, would like to, to try to get um, um, a number of items um, of, of our external auditor friend to be thinking about things a bit more, and that's why I've put a fair amount of a fair amount of the, the reporting in. Um, even same as the meeting before. Do you want to comment? Right. Like having a few funny, funny things with our external auditor in relation to doing things much different than what they've ever done over the time. And I don't know whether that's because they've been pressured by the uh, New South Wales Audit Office to do things differently. But uh, as a good example, um, the, the local roads and community infrastructure program phase two and phase three audit reports um, are normally just a, a two page document. These guys, what did they do? Yeah, so uh, in context, that particular audit acquittal matter that was captured as part of our annual audit program. So we have X amount of grants that we need independent audit acquittal for those. Um, on this occasion, the auditors asked council to put that back a little bit given the timeliness and the occasion of getting to our financial statements and then very quickly turned around and asked why we weren't getting it done. And the delays and information a fair bit of to and fro that I would suggest was unnecessary. At the end of the day, they released a totally separate report to Council indicating that that area forms part of our special purpose financial statements, which is not correct or valid at all. It was just a simple separate audit acquittal process that needed to happen. Um, so very bold in that sense. In their approach and is that right? Yeah. So we've drawn that particular matter in a general way to the, the attention of the, our local member as well. Just the, the onerousness and the to and fro that have to occur with our external order. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, yeah, it's all kind of driven from the audit office. Um, so not necessarily the contract auditor next year. It's just the board office that we're on. Thank you. Any further comments, questions regarding the internal order from this management committee? Um, further put that or otherwise vote. Thank you. 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 Councillor Jackson is second. Councillor Whiteley. Uh, yeah, uh, roads, roads committee meeting uh, 
two and a half, three hours, we drilled down into detail on um, a lot of things, including the flood damage report, the RMCC performance update, um, discussions of uh, travelling stock and the LES and dangers on the road and road traffic count counsellors. A lot of that uh, will be in our director's report later on, but um, just quickly summarising, uh, we're on on track for our road damage funding requirements as far as doing our work. Our RMCC performance report um, was a massive uh, plus than the last one and uh, uh, compliments to the staff uh, uh, that are still here with us and those that have left for that because uh, our uh, performance report was, uh, I don't think you get a better one and paid for it. Uh, we had uh, discussions uh, re-contacting uh, LLS as far as uh, travelling stock uh, doing what they should at night and then we had a uh, trying to uh, cut the business paper down a bit we had some discussions on the detail that should come in, in our in our uh, monthly uh, reports read road and traffic counter and trends um, it, the decision was made that uh, the roads committee would detail, have the details, road traffic counter reports, uh, and work on the trends, and then just present trends in a broad sense to the council. Um, but uh, that's a council council decision. But um, we're trying to, uh, as our committee structure is, to keep the minute detail to those uh, rather lengthy road committee meetings and uh, minimising uh, the length of your business paper. Thank you, Councillor Wobie. Uh, Councillor, we just need to draw your attention to the, the item um, 5.1, the recommendation that traffic out of trends be not be part of the business paper. Um, I think I think the the trends the trends would be a, a piece of paper. It, it is the actual um, ten pages of fine detail. Yeah, no, I, I can accept exactly what you're saying, Councillor. Well, I think it's interesting to see the traffic numbers. Uh, in my mind, I I don't understand. Seven five one five is one hundred and ninety something vehicles a day. But on market road is one hundred and seventy something. So they they they're not that far apart. It's always nice to know in a, in a broader sense where our numbers are. I don't need to know how fast people are going and all that sort of thing. Mm. But it's interesting to know the actual traffic numbers on a road. Um, I don't know whether we can just do a one pager of, of that to come to the business paper. Um, I think that was the through you, Miss Mayor. I think that was the the way we were, we were trending, like not just to cut the finer detail out. You know, there was some uh, quite a long discussion over over that, but, but there's not the numbers and the the, 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 the trends. I think uh, should always be on the uh, road committee report to council, but the uh, just you know not not fifteen not 15 pages of intense detail, which the full traffic, well, it's actually more than that, if you see the full traffic report of detail. Mm -hmm. okay. Councillor, I'm in your hands a little bit about this one. I'm, I'm a little bit keen to just keep a bit of a handle on just traffic down there relatively, so we know traffic counters on that road, average vehicles per day on that road are this. Just one, one page in the business paper as part of the Division of Engineering Services report. Is that is that or, or do you want to see there's just no traffic count at all and it just becomes part of the roads committee and they come, come to us? I think we agree with me last time we had a bit of discussion at the last meeting that maybe even 
the speeds were, might have been incorrect, if there's something wrong with the counter, but I do agree with you with the numbers of vehicles that use those different modes. I think that's, yeah, it's interesting, I find that interesting. <coughs> just keep the best of that. Yeah, through in there. I'm happy for those numbers to stay there because when you're driving on these roads, um, it's good to know the traffic to see how the roads are holding up um, and mm -hmm. the, the funding that's going into getting the roads fixed. I think that yeah, it would be good to keep the numbers happy. Well, it's AADT and percentage vehicles. Average daily vehicles is, I don't need, yeah, percentage, just those two would be kind of everything that I'm in my mind thinking, okay, just where's all the sit roads when we talk about, when we talk about roads. Roads can really bring great information to us, I just want in my mind to already say, yeah, that makes good sense. Mm -hmm. So, with your permission, um, so traffic counter trends information now, now be provided with roads for down the and the get rid of four traffic counter information for AADT and percentage heavy vehicle be provided directly to council each month. Is that it? Just heavy vehicles we just need or there were three classes, weren't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in your number. We know we know either the heavy vehicles or they're not basically and not heavy vehicles. That's all we need to know. And that, that, that that was the, I think, the intent of the roads. Yeah, that's right. Right, so the traffic counter trends information now be provided to the roads committee only, and only the traffic counter information for AADT and percentage heavy vehicle be provided directly to the council each month. Steve That's what you're looking for. Yeah. And really, that would become just one page. Would be that, 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 yeah. At Choro, Choro 58 and a, and a second number, mm -hmm. and you'll have average AADT and percentage heavy vehicle. That's, that, and you can, from that, you can see the trends on one page, and not going through 30 pages. Not one, you'll see it could be up to 15 traffic counters yeah. on 15 different roads or 15 yeah. different locations. So we'll just wait for a minute till we just get this <coughs> entirely clear so that uh, we know exactly what we're voting on. So the, the divisional manager of engineering services who needs to understand what you want. You know, I, I let them try to do that particular recommendation because I couldn't understand what was going on. It was a very good debate that was going on. Yeah, so the move was Councillor White, the second was Councillor Jackson. Are you happy to have that amendment or? May I just add something? Yes. Just for the benefit of the community reading this. Could perhaps put something in there with detailed traffic counter trends information to be provided, and then a summary of traffic counter information blah, 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 to council. Because you're really talking about a summary of the detail. Like in this room. Summary, put summary in front of traffic. Yeah. Having had this conversation, this room through this to there, we know what you're talking about, but people reading it and it's like a problem. Okay. So, the mover and second now have you read that on 5.1? Have you read it? Councillor White, are you happy? Yes. Did you put all that for some in that? Bring some more. Yeah. 
when it comes to walking, you're not, you're not. That's a mouthful, that's all. It is a beautiful mouthful. It's establishing what we're seeking, does it? Does it? Councillors, any further information sought regarding the uh, Rose Committee meeting? I'm sure the details of uh, like on the divisional meeting to report later in the meeting on one by any other. Oh. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Being nothing further, we'll put that all those in favour. Yes. <coughs> Carrie, bring on to the meeting of the plan committee, Monday the 18th of March. Just for a movement a second for the Minutes of that test of McCoskey's happy to move it. Councillor okay, Whiteley happy to second. Councillor McCoskey. Uh, no, I think Councillor Whiteley was going to speak on behalf of Councillor Brewer. Can you tell us who the person who's going to be meeting with? I don't think Councillor Whiteley was set up for every meeting. Mr. Mayor, um, <laughs> The, uh, the plan committee went into a lot of detail over a lot of things and it went on for quite some time, but uh, the major things were done with uh, uh, council staff reported on the uh, new second-hand truck uh, that we, uh, we purchased uh, in new brand new uh, water tanker that is now in operation. Um, the decision was made uh, operationally that the uh, the new uh, MAC truck would go on to the side tipper uh, uh, road train uh, outfit, uh, gravel moving, dirt moving uh, outfit, and the uh, freight liner purchased new uh, 12 months ago or 10 months ago uh, with uh, to. Um, the major new, brand new water tanker. Uh, uh, the Rose Committee, uh, in principle, agreed with that. That was fine, but both trucks are capable of doing either. And uh, in the future um, acquisition of uh, another road train setup would would be would be possible if budget budgeted. Uh, in in the future, um, there was a lot of uh, uh, discussions re our long term plan replacement policy and where we should go. I think there's still to be some work done on that, but um, the, uh, the the work between a divisional manager of finance and, and our engineering staff. Uh, we need to, need to get through the general manager, get that in in place so everybody um, knows where we're at. Um, that was the major steps of the meeting. There was some minor uh, planned operational matters, but nothing uh, untoward. Any, I mean, just what to you or is there any major capital planning requirement that's still to be done in this financial year? That would be our plan. Um, our plan inventory as per our budget. Um, so, Mayor, I uh, guess there's some items that uh, either need to be sold or need to be purchased from this financial year. Just, just true, Mr. Mayor. There was discussion and uh, uh, not decisions made, but um, the the age of our greater fleet was discussed in detail, um, and uh, the budgetary process is going forward. Should um, uh, take into that the age of the greater fleet and prioritise possibly uh, upgrading greater. Is that uh, 
Yes, Mr. Mayor, that's a fair comment. Um, uh, just for your information, our fleet stock is uh, egg, and uh, most of them are already for investment. So, because of uh, the link budget that we have, we cannot place them for the So, we are trying to push some uh, to future years uh, as much as possible. Um, like you say, the greatest um, we have, even with the prioritization that we did, we had two proposed to be placed next financial year. So we cannot do that because the credit prices have gone up a little bit, like double. Really? Yes. That's part of 700 grand. That's right. No, yeah. The much we used to be on the 400 or so, I guess. And is that, I mean, we still get that if dried up? And I'll go over to the blank screen to come back to it. And, and the, 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 the thing is that in three years' time, we don't want all our mm -hmm. fleet, it, it, we'd, we'd be in an untenable situation. So the management of the hours and the fleet is uh, in, in the plant committee's opinion. Is uh, should be a higher okay. council for, and so there's something will come out of the next planning committee. Planning right? committee, and, and obviously the the process of the next budget mm -hmm. is reviewed. Yeah, we have budget for 24. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Which one, Mr. Member, what we're really saying is, is that uh, the results of 23-24 may help us. Yeah. My question we have other pressures as well, like some some floods, you know, the levy operation stuff hasn't been paid yet, things like that. And so so it's not guaranteed that we need no. no. Thank you. This list has been it's on the agenda, thank you. Thank you. Right. Sorry, Councilman Hoss. Just one question, Mr. Just in item one up here, I think in the in the business but subject to the fine budget. Yeah, because it might not be afforded. Yeah, that just doesn't subject to the fine budget, as in final budget. Yeah, the final budget should sure approve in June. Yeah, and you appreciate that, but it's just about written there. Oh, yeah, right. just fine. Fine. Oh, yeah. meant no. final. 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 Yeah, up here, fine. Yeah. It's now yeah. it's 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 well done. It's oh, being modified now as we speak. Thank you, Councillor Boss. <laughs> okay. Well, that's real. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councillors, any further comments, questions, information, sort regarding the minutes of the planning committee? Thank you. Thank you. Put that all those in favour. Carried. We've got the meeting of the managed committee held on the 19th of March. Someone can move the minutes of that meeting. So, um, one one interesting thing we've added to the Mannix to and, and the purple on page four, five, six, seven. Um, you. I just wanted to show you first time around what, what will happen is that will be a report and you will only get it in the, in the business papers rather than on your Mannix from now on and you'll see, you'll see that in the business paper, not in the, in the minutes from now on, um, most probably. Um, we're actually wanting to make sure that all the visual managers and managers, the relevant people, are watching their income requirements for their projects as well as the expenditure and that the, they're reporting and that they're, that they're actually getting funds in so we can have as much funds in our bank account as with someone else and uh, um, some of them you will notice are subject to milestones and, and some are some are just staff needing to take some action in the future to, um, to get funds paid 
Um, that's why we want to quickly get back to being 13, 14, 15 million dollars of that instead of the 8 or, 5, 8 or 9 million that we've got at the moment. And as we spend the money, we need to get the money back in. Exactly. So don't misread it. The council is as I did initially, thinking that's money that we paid out to contractors. It's actually money that we're seeking from the government. Oh, irrelevant. When, it says, when it says paid, it means paid by government to us. Uh, Mr. Mr. Mayor, and it's as of a certain date, too. Um, and it will show some commitment, but a good example is this at uh, page five on essential public asset, number the third one down, chance that we're very, very close to that 1.252 million that we've spent. Close, but um, but as of the 18th of March, it was, it was only 1.038. Spend. So, you know, two weeks of gravel cartage at the top end and uh, be very, very quick to, to spend that last quarter of I mean, $210,000 as an example. But it's really, it's there to, for the Mannix to be able to say, go and get that money, go and get that money, quickly, quickly, get it in. As, as council, we've been very much focused on the expenditure side and what's going out, but that's to come in first. Mm -hmm. So this is, I, I think this is a valuable piece of information for managed particularly to, to know exactly where they are. Councilman Clark. Very clear. Page four, um, item five, four, five, two, staff immunity and blood testing vaccination program. Yeah. You know, all the special stuff for the ones who mostly play around with yeah. you know, dead things. Yeah. It's not just tetanus, it's all the funny ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a reasonable amount happen, will happen on, well, what it is is you have to do pathology work first to see whether, um, and then follow up after that. So that's why it's been so complicated. It's, it's taken a long time to organise, but I think there's, is there 43 people, certainly a good percentage of people who have said yes to it. Yep. You know, particularly the people who tip garbage, water yeah. 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 Um, all the fleet guys who are playing with the machines that are out there. Oh, sorry, Mr. Mayor, I'm just going, going through it. Um, one, one comment top of page three is just us thinking about how to make sure that our community engagement does try to get our 30 to 40 year olds in our community involved. Um, that's, um, there's, there's a chance a, 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 a custom service charter might come to the April, April when, and, it'll, um, and, and it will be a basic, simple custom service charter, not, not uh, 10 pages long. Um, and we've got some help from um, from others and from uh, our internal auditor with that. Um, a contra um, the, as I say, the grant stretch, so, um, I just want to make sure I get as many dollars in as possible. The Flood Restoration Special Projects Manager is, um, and has been on top of, um, on top of his flood damage and his RNCC work. Um, need to make sure that we get paid for our RNCC work as well, and that's why it's in a purple in the grant. Now, uh, sadly, our flood restoration special project manager uh, is finishing up with us, going, going elsewhere. But uh, with uh, positive news, on the 8th of April, um, we have a new roads infrastructure manager starting, and uh, for a while, um, uh, the I'll call it the interim roads infrastructure manager who's going to help out is the flood restoration special projects manager. And we have we have a little bit of movement in the engineering, um, uh, junior engineer wise, um, and and uh, but we've been able to replace them fairly quickly as well. So uh, because because we 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 need the management and supervision done right as well as the jobs done right. And, and if anybody knows about five or six guys who want to get on our machines, and particularly in roads, it'd be really nice to pass them on to us. But it's still about 
eight positions vacant. Yes. And we lost another one the other week, too? Yes. So nice, very pretty Facebook posts and things out here and in the paper and, and on every community notice board. But if you know, word of mouth can work too. Thank you for that update. Any further comments, questions regarding the minutes of the minutes? Councillor Walker. Mr. Mayor, it's just, well, it's page eight, but it's page 40. It's, it, I think it's come up that, um, about the Department uh, of Education pro program between Council and the Wild Central School. Is this? I don't know. Anything. This is the career study. Career yeah. study. Yeah. Thank you. That's happening today. I know some some initial some initial uh, um, um, leadership day is going to be in here on by, by about between thirty and forty people um, with, with a couple of our staff members being involved. But that's why Marion Ann has gone to the school now. Thank you. Further information sort regarding the minutes of the Manage Committee meeting. Nothing further, we'll put that all out in favour. Yes, carried. Moving on to item 8 on our agenda, with that being the reports of delegates and one item in there, the meeting of the Warren Interagency Support Service, which is held on February. Councillor Derrick, we'll have to do that. Thank you. Second, Councillor Jackson, Councillor Derrick. Thank you, Mr. Uh, there is a lot of information generally in the minutes for the interagency, but I do think that's important because there's a lot of delegates who aren't able to attend, um, and the minutes are circulated to over 100 contacts. Um, people want to give or take some changes in, in roles for various organisations, but um, I think it is important that this much information is shared, and I know a lot of us do rely upon those minutes. Uh, just one update since then, that um, there is a date set for the next Coro Expo, which I uh, heard Council did have a monthly set up at last year. So that's a community wellbeing day um, at the Warren Youth Foundation and organised by the Warren Youth Foundation. So that's on Tuesday the 7th of May this year. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. You, I just made a bit of a comment in general business about meeting some more um, justices of the peace in, in, in that local government area. Yeah. And we're inclined that way, would be uh, a yeah, Now, we did, um, we did find out, so we can up to see who I might have taken this. So, there are quite a few around. I think the problem, the problem is that there's not as many as they used to be at council, um, and a lot of people just come first to council. But if you look on the website, there is is still a good number. I think one in one in Nevertire, quite a lot in Warren, scattered thereabouts. Um, and I don't think there's any at the clock that decided to start from that end. So it was, it was raised mainly because because there's not as many accounts or because there's not as many accounts. Thank you. Thank you. Just you, Mayor. Um, I just want to comment. I'm really happy to see that um, the youth centre is engaging in a lot of programs with the schools, um, and and especially um, the one they did with the Royal Flying Doctors with those sessions. I think it sounds like it's going to be parents and children with a lot of issues at the moment. Um, I think that's great, and obviously it must have been well supported because they're having more which is great, and very happy to see the navigator continuing here as well. Yeah, so, thank you. Thank you. Any further comments, information sort regarding the um, morning ratings and report? Nothing further, put that all over the data. Yes, Harry. We are on, on, on our agenda regarding policy. There's one policy item there, the investment policy and the review. Um, someone had to move 
and that it's minor alterations to occur to that investment policy comes with goose is happy to move. Secondly, can you change that to say alteration? Councillor Bruce is happy to move that. Second. Councillor Derek, thank you. Councillor Bruce. Uh, happy to move the recommendation and to the finance manager would like to comment on just just for clarity, I think mean, the main finance administration might just comment just to explain what yes. and it's all highlighted in the business paper there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Councillor has cited this back in January as a review of the policy to start with. Um, this is second year in review um, to change a few items, particularly when uh, Council was prompted with a uh, query from TPOL initially. Um, basically, TPOL had uh, put to Council looking for feedback on the relevance of Council's counterparty limits, which is a percentage of their overall invested funds that can sit in any one uh, deposit taking institution. <coughs> certain percentages of maximum allowable values in there. And on that basis, TCORP thought that Council wasn't compliant and that an investment portfolio present is too aggressive and highlights uh, a higher risk in, in their view, which may affect Council borrowing capacity through TCORP into the future. Um, so based on that, I would sort of had in mind to review again at a later date. But uh, what I sort of see is a well considered and well known, if you're looking at a risk versus return approach, the idea is not really that you'd be looking at singular items. So, three items that form part of that, and in order to establish what you're doing and what decisions you make, the council's money, being the counterparty limits, the uh, turn to horizon, so the link of those funds being invested. Most of the time, pretty much all of the time here, it's, it's working funds and short-term funds that are invested. That is to say up to 180 days maximum. It's a very quick turnaround with them. Uh, and the final aspect is acting within the ratings assessment using the reference of standard and pause or um, something very similar, which gives you an idea of risk, short and long-term. And deposit take an institution. So presently, council on a strict counterparty limit, there's two items in there, A and B and Judo Bank, where council is seen as not being compliant because our percentage of overall fund invested with those people exceeds the relevant allowable limit. Uh, as you might have, according to the percentages there that were listed in the old policy, basically, council was never compliant because 100% of the funds were with them out. Um, and whether that presents a risk or not, it's something that we have to kind of work out. So now they're going to close doors and people with short term invested funds with them, were they going to lose out? I would suspect that there's very low risk of that. And uh, I'll extend that approach to where I knew that we were only investing short-term funds. So the short-term rating for those institutions is in the A categories, not triple B or unrated, uh, which says in the short term that they're pretty well off. Um, where it goes out into the triple B rated category on a long-term uh, view, certainly the Geo Bank and potentially A and B where it at the margins, saying that they're satisfactory, but there's a bit more risk around it. So we put all this back to TCOR at the end of the day. I've reviewed the policy, sort of with that apple and with apples around uh, a good number of metro or regional councils, just to sort of get a feel of how everybody else works that approach, and that multidisciplinary kind of risk versus return assessment. And that's where we've ended up. So tidying up the policy as it sits, and uh, basically that's the background. So, Furthering the in cash and investments report, which I can talk to later, there's a bit more detail in there, but 
at this stage that was the need and reasoning for the view. As the mayor said, the items were changed or highlighted in the um, revised policy. And at this stage, that's um, yeah, councils and grants and accepting of those. Happy to see your questions if you want some more detail. But. Thank you, Brett. Any further comments, questions regarding the um, <coughs> your deposit? Nothing further, we'll put that all right in favour. Yes, carried. Moving on to reports to the general manager. First of those being the outstanding reports checklist. Someone had to move the, the recommendation in the, in the number of asterisk items that may. The uh, the that action checklist. Thank you, Councillor Whiteley. Move second, Councillor McCoskey. You might just go through those asterisk items if you could, and just um, yeah, just help out on anything that as we go. The first one is the marriage at the bottom of page six. Internal audit. Um, the procurement, of uh, procurement training that happened on the 21st of, um, 21st of uh, uh, March. It's about 20 of us, um, and uh, we'll make sure that we utilise the ROG 10 checklist. So next one, top of, top of page 7, um, is the Drought Resilience Plan, um, uh, marketing and promotional open meetings is done and dusted. Same with the cost shifting, which we've given the local member times two, and the man's written, written um, to everyone as per the resolution. Page eight, uh, historical photos are now on display as required for visitor information centre. Um, we've, had, we've had our meeting uh, uh, with, in regard to the Warrenshire Crime Statistical Review and still working on uh, uh, an attempt for precinct meetings, but that's on top of um, um, we've, we've written to them, and, and the mayor and I will continue to uh, agitate for them. Page eight, uh, relining, relining of uh, so the first one, number two, and on the next page, number four, uh, and we'll leave number three there. And we've started the ball rolling with talking to the local member for extra funds. Page 10, in the middle of page 10, um, the draft 24-25 estimates um, have been um, drafted with the 4.5%, so that's been noted. To um, page 13, in the middle of page 13, the Coli, the Coli uh, bore works happened, but Nevertire is still going, so I didn't ask for uh, at Coli. Middle of page 14 is the Oxy Highway Insect Slip Lanes. Um, that's the responsibility of uh, the, the uh, intersection owner, which is Australian Food Revival or OSCOP. Um, and um, there has been a development application done and dusted where they were asked to organise a traffic, a traffic study that those extra storage sheds actually didn't need, didn't, that there wasn't any extra traffic because it was all on, on farm on that side. Um, bottom of page 16 is the uh, <coughs> Victoria Oval LED lighting done and dusted. Hopefully the union has paid their 10,000 plus GST donation. Page 17, um, number one and number three is finished. Um, I think you're, you've engaged the contractor, but we'll leave that there, there until the uh, jobs are finished. And let's hope we get a, a third bridge organised. Then that's about it. Now, I, I could um, give the council um, a little bit of an update on um, Carter Oval. 
one of the ones if you'd like that because I uh, very much appreciate that. Mm. Fine. Uh, so, you know, so Carter Oval, um, I'll just talk about that standing stuff. So amenities building construction, um, landmark the contractor or the amenities building have engaged the local tiler to completely tile the concrete surface um, of, of the pad. Um, they, they were on site this week and doing some post planning and removing concrete splashing, etc. Um, next week, their project manager will, will be here um, uh, checking final tile samples. It, it, it's hoped that tiler will start in May, but may be earlier. Um, Splash plumbing is going to be engaged for do some downpipe connection to the stormwater pit in that area. And it is expected that um, that building will be finished late June and July. Uh, we've got some landscaping um, and turfing to do around that to follow. Now the cricket pitch. Um, um, cricket pitch area, so the outer field, June, uh, Regeneration is, is okay. There is some localised top dressing required, um, and we are attempting to do weekly mowing from now on, so grass doesn't get so high that. Um, and it was the sorry, and the reason why is, is that the grass got too much everywhere, and and um, and that was the last one to get done. It just got too high for even sprinklers to be able to um, uh, do things necessary. Um, concrete pathways are complete. Um, there's some restoration of edges that are to be done. Um, Slap plumbing, as I say, has been engaged for the extension of the stormwater line by about 40 metres to the lowest point um, in that area. Um, cricket wicket is being fertilised and maintained with a schedule. Um, the turf has struck well. Um, and as I say, there's ongoing mowing that um, the town services and the regional manager and services need to make sure it's done appropriately. Um, of course, athletic track will be marked last. Um, the, the artificial turfing on the practice net area uh, and the junior cricket pitch is about is due for June. Uh, they want to just let the concrete cure uh, a bit more. Um, so there's nothing come through the concrete to into the artificial turf. Uh, uh, that, that should happen by about June. Local contractor hopefully will be organised May May June for the for the uh, net nets cricket practice nets. And only chance that the discus ring. Next will happen. We have to make sure that we've got the funds to be able to do, do that. Well, um, there's six vehicle crossings of all the paths. You actually see them, they're a little bit wider, and that's where the double reinforcing yeah, is to be very important. So they'll be painted so that everyone knows where edges will be painted where you can drive over. Um, the car park, um, we um, uh, we, we've tried for a local contractor, but he, uh, uh, Jim, Jim's grudge is too big. There's a chance we might have to bring in um, another contractor, getting a request from him for some smaller gear to help us with the uh, uh, uh. So, uh, so, some as soon as it gets close, um, um, and it, it, I mean, you imagine ceiling is going to be last. Get get everything around the building finished. The sub subgrade trimming and proof well and subway spreading and, and, and works, then the curb and gutter, most probably the same contractor who did industrial access road. Um, some ceiling after that and some line marking. Now the socket oval, we are attempting but can't guarantee yet that they can be used by the fourth of May. Um, the socket they're booked at both locations, Victoria Oval and and, but the first time going is Saturday the 4th of May and look, uh, uh, the advice is that the fields are safe, many, many undulations, um, you know, imagine there's some movement of the plant over the time, there's some, there's some um, um, 
uh, top sorting and uh, needed, needed. We have a guarantee to the, the soccer club that uh, the fourth and Miley, and what they're prepared to do is just take a couple of portaloos and work out of the ute that they'd like to use their the new field. Um, uh, but that's not guaranteed yet, so it might be, might be the Victoria, Victoria Park. Um, there's a clay layer and a road base layer to be put at the bottom of the. Uh, um, I never used to play. Where you run and long jump, long jump, jump. Thank you. Long long jump. Um, and there's some geofabric that goes out of the top to help with the drainage um, set up. And there's actually a, di a different type of sand that we've had for purchase. There's actually a crop of sand. And the kids aren't able to dig it out because it's a lot of dollars worth of sand. <laughs> um, there's six seats to be ordered and installed. Um, as I say, the nets for the protection of the shop foot and discus. Uh, area are yet to be, we need to make sure that we've got the funds to, to put them in. And it'd be, it'd be, it'd be the same same contract as this. Is there a concrete um, base for that business? Is it done or not? Yeah, there is a history as yet. Cousin Bosky has some questions, I think. Yeah, yes, I'm over. Cut, please. The long jump pit, the concrete border or surrounds it around it. Will they be hidden, or is there no safety issues in terms of kids jumping into the sand and, and impacting the concrete? Jump in the middle? No, I think that, that, that doesn't no, matter what no, I think that's the design of it, I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah, just, yeah, I just had a few people ask me about it in terms of that, that instantly. Supposedly that's, suppose that followed the international... Well, I would hope. But yes, yeah. and the the tiling of the of the floor that that is the solution to leveling it. In terms it's the best solution. Yep, and and we've demanded it. Yep, and it, it, it will be a good result in the end. So the irrigation system is working down there properly now. Um, when there's not long grass over, over the yeah, but I can appreciate the grass that was there here a fortnight, three weeks ago and how that affected the operation of the spray because when it was mowed again in that southeastern corner near what used to be Bear Campbell's house there were dead patches everywhere. Um, now it looks fine because we've had over an inch of rain and smaller showers over the last fortnight so it all looks good. Um, I just had concerns that when it was mowed there were dead patches there and also, there's one location if you drive down past there, and I don't know whether you might have a leaking sprinkler, it looks like it's dead. About 20, 30 metres in, off the Stafford Street. Um, Say it again, Gamson Moxon. Where is it? It's in, it, I'm not saying it is, but it just appears as if there's a sprinkler leaking there. And I don't know whether, if the, how the system's set up, that it would leak. But it looks like there's a wet patch. If, if you were to drive, come up the road with the, with the oval on your left and about 20 or 30 metres past the boundary and then 20 or 30 metres in, there appears to be, well, looking from the road, damp patch, but it may not be. Yeah. But yeah, just that irrigation system, because like I say, when it was mowed the other day, it's like a patchwork quilt. But again, just a question, parks and gardens mow that, do they? Thank you. I, I do have faith in the infrastructure projects manager and keep on top of this project. Yeah, Councillor Bosby. So if we draw his attention to these sorts of things, um, we'll get investigated and very, very He's um, certainly been uh, speaking fairly bluntly with the contractors regarding the mm. building. So um, I think we'll, we'll eventually get there, but it's not the way we would have liked to have got there. No, with the idea we are. Well, we're at 23 March, we're looking at opening. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Here we are, 24 March. Oh, December. Just like this one. Anyway, <coughs> the light of the tunnel. That's good. And yeah, no, it's lots of little projects, well, little other projects getting towards completion. So, you know, like all these things, take a little bit of sorting out. But I'm very confident we're going to get there and have a wonderful facility in the end. 
Well, it is one of the Thank you very much, Mayor. Yeah, we'll be uh, spot on. Councillor, just to draw your attention, it's an asterisk item on, on page 10 regarding the council workshop Wednesday, 17th of April, regarding the um, uh, estimates. So please you put that in your, in your, in your diary. Um, Four o'clock to six o'clock. Because that's a pretty important um, discussion that we need to have. So it's, it's actually there that. I think I'll send it out for Councillor Hood. Send out for Councillor Hood's invites to everyone. Councillor McCoskey and then Councillor White. Uh, Miss Hummel. The pool, is everything in train in terms of the pool closing and work progressing soon thereafter? Yeah, things have been cleared out the week before, the, in the week, two weeks ago. Um, we would probably get in the same contractor to help us with the, um, the asbestos removal stuff as well. So um, that, that, that's in the contingency. But, um, but this is one project we can't afford in the life or a No, 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 I understand that. Uh, yeah. critical. Managing the, the pool complex was clean. Is it saying, yes, I have have everything out of here by this week. So she, that part of it was certainly trained. Some of the contractors were on time, which are we not hearing anything differently going in that space? No. So I have to be in the ground as soon as it's possible after the closing. Just one so budget uh, budget meeting, uh, will there be anything distributed prior to that? Is there hunger prior to that? Only a small chance. You'll be, like last time, you'll have your big A3 yeah. um, with, with me going through everything. But um, it's just, we, we really pushed right up. Um, so only a chance, not guaranteed, Mr. Man. Even if there could be a summary that would be in terms of the bigger items that we need to consider, if it's a trade off between, yeah, noting no, this we yeah, in this area, this is where we stretch. If we could just have a bit of it, yeah. hopefully, you'll, get, you'll, you'll be presented a, a, work, um, a balanced budget. Balance budget. Mm -hmm. This is what we took out, this is what we kept in. Yeah. But understand, it's just that timing wise, it's just so close. Yeah, it's, it's just an intense progress. Like you, the professionals have been working on this for obviously time to to put to. Um, yeah, it's very, very, very intense for our for our Two hours, right? There we go. You're not going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, you're in, you're in trouble with I'm not. I'm in trouble. Wasn't there a principle that uh, in, in local government you never trust engineers, even when engineers are trans? <laughs> There's Mr. Mayor, they're the ones you can trust. The greatest democracy in the world. The only person who doesn't get elected to local government America is the engineer. <laughs> I remember that. Councillor, any further comments, questions regarding the um, outstanding reports checklist? Nothing further. Put that all those in favour. Yes, carried. Item two of the reports of the general manager being the committee and delegates meeting. This is traditionally the item on which this is outstanding item. And if I find the appropriate in recognition of Warren being a healthy town and to keep awareness of a healthy lifestyle, council will be standing while building this item. Item two of the general manager report the committee and delegates meetings. Someone happy to move the information? That report. Councillor Jackson is happy to move. Second, Councillor McCoskey. Councillor Jackson. I just moved the information to be accepted. Thank you. 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 Thank
Any any comments, questions? Really, a further meeting to that in, in our business paper. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Ms. Mayor. Just the change to the interagency meeting date. It was the 18th of April, but it's been moved to the 11th of April because it suits more agencies not to hold it in fiscal bold days. So it's on the schedule. It's on the schedule. It's on the schedule. It's the 18th, but so it's actually going to be the 11th. Okay. Thank you. Any further comments or questions regarding the theme and um, sorry, the biggest thing? Mr. Mayor, your mom might step out of meeting Monday the 8th of April. Very important. So the committee that's Councillor Bruce, Councillor Walker, Councillor Van Elbon. Councillor Higgins, yes. Councillor Higgins. So it's only, sorry, Councillor Bruce and Councillor Walker are the only two. Yep. Great. Okay. Thank you. Nothing further on item two of the general manager's report. The committee delegates meeting to put that. All those in favour? Against? Gary. Thank you. Item three of the report to the general manager then the work progress report for infrastructure projects. So I have to move that it's a considerable amount of information information we received and noted. Thank you, Councillor McGoffke is happy to move that one. Second Councillor Walker, Councillor McGoffke. No, it's just the recommendation that the general manager might enlighten us if he needs to from some of them. Now, I got excited and talked about Carter Oval. Yes. I've been talking about Carter Oval and then from what you're here, uh, please. Um, well, and see, that's, that's, uh, and so what, what I'm making sure happens is that uh, it's expenditure or committed. Because that's the idea, is commitment costing, so you can watch your budgets, etc. So everything, every, you know, if you, if you see that, um, it's got a three hundred one thousand dollar budget and two hundred eighty one thousand dollars on it is expended because some of it's committed as well. But that's the idea: is, is that you quickly, as you write the orders, you realise that there's something wrong. You know, budget wise, it's just one more check. Um, Cicada Oval is is uh, starting to sail close to the wind. Um, the the um, item on page page. Uh, uh, 24. Um, so, you know, there's some, there's, there's a bit more extra work going to happen out at Showgate Race Course with some computer savings. Um, the fi you know, final water and sewer stuff is going to be able to be afforded because um, uh, the town services manager and local contractors have saved a reasonable amount of money in the, um, <coughs> the toilet block, which is good. Just extra water and, and sewer. Is that it, it, 19, late 60s, 1970s uh, facility, um, electrical, water and sewer is what needs to be um, all, all in place. There is some extra work going to happen to the grandstand because we're still having some leak, leaking. Um, and really, I think people are taking a decision to, to um, the joints to get redone. Um, Lots of projects. I mean, that's why, for example, on the bottom of page 31, your uh, your, your 1.2 million dollar project is almost spent when we haven't done anything yet because the order's been written for the amenities out uh, for, for the kiosk and the amenities. Um, something positive um, on the bottom of page 32. Uh, that 887500 from OLG is verbally being uh, okay and okay. okay. yesterday, okay. yeah, yeah, which is good. The Macquarie Park restoration, plus other things, is actually out for tender at the moment for a uh, soft fall. Um, hopefully a tender will go out in April for 
the one at the bottom of page 33, which is the, uh, the female friendly facilities in Victoria Park. Um, lobby, lobby, uh, the library work is near complete, and you will notice your, um, we can't, we can't do any open, official opening in May because that's just a council meeting at the same time as uh, the biggest morning tea and that's why it's been organised for the council meeting in June. So um, check that out please. Um, and lots uh, local roads um, projects are starting to get organised including the CCTV and perhaps and not the um, the EV work and Carter Oval to make sure that um, uh, we still have EV work hopefully to happen at the VIC, but um, we need to make sure we get some CCTV cameras and setups for ourselves and the police, which will happen very, very soon, April May. A few grants to out, let's hope we get them. Is that Just for the Councillor Foskin's question on the First site to be on the swimming pool and energy building, first site meeting the contractor undertaken on the 8th of February. So at least being there, successful tenderer, and so um, that's, that's a positive. Uh, and they're, they're the same guys that did the log, are they not? Yes, yes. So I think they've got some money on the board as you talked about. So um, yeah, we've got some faith in, in that. Getting the job completed in a timely manner and to withstand this. Mr. Mayor, um, bottom of page 36 and 37, um, two interesting extra grant applications is um, hopefully a transport from New South Wales. Um, uh, no guarantee yet, but um, 2024 20, Warren Christmas, Christmas Street party. And another go at um, investing in Warren and um, through women in New South Wales for the very similar thing. Using using the um, women of Warren Shire to make uh, future women of Warren Shire in a similar fashion of the International Women's Week one that we were unsuccessful with. So hopefully we'll uh, have a go at being successful with that one. Mm. Any further comments, questions, information being sought regarding the works progress report in the project? Okay, thank you. We'll put that all out in favour. Yes, Gary. Moving on to the final item of the report to begin on magical regarding the local roads congress and um, the recommendation there to approve the, approve the, uh, the attendance of two interested councillors. The general manager and the visual and engineering services to that um, program. Congress. Congress. Um, you'd like to nominate? Yeah. Well, um, well, Councilman Foster moved it. I think he's moved it. I'm moving it. Why? Is that fair? So, so instead of moving it, I'll move that. We'll, we'll, sorry, we'll move, we'll move the, the uh, recommendation. So, Councilman Foster, you're happy to move the recommendation. And Councilman Weiss, you're happy to second. And then. Um, Changing it to be um, attendance of councillors um, Mikoski and Whiteley. Get rid of everything to quick. That's not that. Thank you. No, it's 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 trying, trying to take advantage of um, early bird. Yes, right. Uh, moving second day, um, Councillor McCloskey and Whiteley have to just had you know, themselves nominated as the two delegates, the two councillor delegates to that. Unless some other council would prefer to go? Uh, the two councillors were best uh, versed in, in that particular space. Thank you, but that's, that's up to other councillors. Yeah. Very happy day going. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very early start to the late night. 
still completely blind. No, I'm not <laughs> saying <laughs> Try to build it on and don't come back to it. Come back to it on Tuesday morning. I do know that it's going to be We made one of the photos. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah. Did you know that? Very important. Uh, Obviously, I, I think the yes. councillors know that they were there. We were very, very attentive. Yeah. Thank you. I think it's important you attend these, these meetings and, and the government in that space. Any further comments, questions regarding the uh, <coughs> item for the general management report pertaining to the local roads contract? Can you further put that all out in favour? Yes. Carried. Moving to the reports of the Division Manager of Finance Administration, the first of those. The reconciliation certificate. We're never to move reconciliation certificate. Thank you, Councillor Jack is out. Councillor Jackson, I think you move that second by Councillor Walker. Councillor Gates. I move that the uh, recommendation that the uh, statements be received and noted and I'll uh, just invite the Division Manager for that to Parts Administration to make a copy of the work. Yeah, so to this man, uh, just for this report, I only want to illustrate, point out the difference given the revised uh, investment policy. So the additional notations, months, and moving forward will be present as well. Is uh, commentary in the report speaks to the review, review of the investment policy. To allow a bit more flexibility and uh, the compliance deemed appropriate for investing activities on that basis. Uh, specifically related to the AMP and GEO investments. Now, in that case, you can see in the individual area that they're due to mature on the 29th of April. AMP, 29th of July, AMP, and the geo date, 9th of May. So I have reached out to uh, establish where the council can uh, recall those funds <coughs> to ascertain whether there's any benefit there, just for the sake of being compliant in the realms of our investment policy overall, as per uh, people, inference, and so forth. Now, the break costs are significant. Uh, a bit more than I was expecting, and we need to give them 31 days' notice. Uh, so at this stage, my view would be to just let them uh, let them run, maximise the return on the interest rather than lose. So it pretty much drops down to less than three percent return if we were to recall those funds. It doesn't seem appropriate in my professional opinion. Uh, so as stated in the risk implications, that being considered, there is the, the risk or inference of a measure of non-compliance, um, specifically in the eyes of TCOR and most likely the auditors moving forward, uh, is the, the counterparty limits if we were not compliant as per our policy, which may impact TCOR risk assessment of council that might limit future borrowing ability. Um, yeah. I'm not really thinking that there will be any future borrowings with C4 any time soon for Council, but um, we're talking the end of this financial year when these investments, or even when the uh, AMP investments roll over, will be compliant and it won't be an issue. So it's a short term kind of problem at this stage. Thank you. Councillor White. Um, in, in the light of that, and I, I follow the logic, should, should Council formally um, note that fact that we will be un, non compliant for a matter of two and a half months? Stemming 
to be three years to work. It's going to be listed as a clause in the report with reference to the legislated item of delegation as a response to accounting officer or a state whether it is or isn't as per council's policy and so forth. Um, so that is very basically like you're saying that it's deemed as not, not compliant with council's policy. So we can certainly change that and say it will be in the future. Um, yeah. But, but it is not. So there is a there is through you, Mr. Mayor, there is a, a tracking of that that has been mentioned to us. Yes, it's in the report. It's in the in the report there on in in the, in the under report heading. The points that the who's making the points administration has been making are, are noted there. So I think you might be recovered off um on, on what's what we a, a reasonable person would expect us to do, and it's been noted, and so we're understanding where we're going in the future. We're in a transitional period. Yeah, this policy has only just been adopted as of today, and so we've got this it's a transition. We will be compliant with our own policy well, in, a matter, in a couple of months' time. Yeah. It's interesting now, through you, Mr. Mayor, that TCOR, probably from my perspective, given the change of staff, you know, there might be a bit more of a focus or attention on this. Uh, investing activities at councils, they tried to have a bit more influence and control over that through their extended borrowing across the industry. And I would suggest it's probably been looking to get more traction on people being the body in which councils largely invest rather than open market being successful. And people suggest that the best rates around and everybody come here. That's my um, view of it. But in reality, going back, um, the simple fact council have investments with NAB primarily in the prior, officially not compliant with policy, never was. So, I mean, it's against that we've got the, the major pause of guarantee for the strike to put it on. Let's formalise this a little bit. Come through the mayor, please, and then we'll do a problem. Thank you. Manager of Finance Administration. Unless there's other inquiry from the councillors, um, as much as I can offer at this stage, I think. Thank you. Any further comments, questions regarding the reconciliation to the city? I think that's been covered all along. Nothing further to put that. All those in favour is carried. Moving on to item two of the Division Major Final Administration Report, being the subject of the Rates and Charges. Someone have to move the uh, statements. Information is received to note. Councillor Jackson again happy to move that. Second, Councillor Mosby. Councillor Jackson. Anything further on the item two of the Division of Annual Finance Administration Report, the State of the Rates and Annual Changes? Nothing further put that. All those in favour? Against? Carry. Item three, Division of Annual Finance Administration Report, pertaining to works progress. So we have to make a recommendation. The information is received and noted there. Councillor Walker and Councillor Jackson. Councillor Walker. Oh, I'm happy to make a recommendation. Thank you. 
One of the things in that, just as a barrier to the broad month report on the public library infrastructure grant audit, the, uh, the budget figure and natural the expenditure figure changed. The budget changed particularly on a uh, bit of oversight in terms of matching grants. So that actually is the project in total rather than just the one library grant. So it includes a small amount of funding from the LRCR program that has been added basically. Lost your information if you want to reflect on the program, you can see that figures changed. It's a total project which includes a couple of different funds now. So now it's true. When I was reporting prior, basically I was only saying, hey, this is the library, this is what the, the funding is, and that's what's been to wrap that up as the, the whole project item there. And just an update on Councillor's education regarding the uh, electronic management um, electronic records management system and for that um, tasks in that space. Um, we can also update the PDF. So, through this with now have demonstrations from the two providers. Uh, so one of the main options that council has at this stage, given the costs of not involved in, in other businesses quite high. So I've got a come up with a report for senior management and uh, basically comparing contrast both of those to see which might be the best option for council that may extend into the future, a few years with the uh, Plug firms offer a whole enterprise based solution rather than just records alone, property management. So it seems like if, if council was thinking about that in the future, we might be best to jump at that as an option now, knowing that this current software package, Practical Plus, may not be around um, for much longer, the next couple of years, most likely. Um, so you're already reaching a point where it's fairly well not being developed and it definitely won't be supported into the future given how old it's structured and whatnot. So mm -hmm. that's essentially where we're at. And obviously council will see the resulting comparative and whatnot um, for future decisions that are going to be made in the document management system. And so they're both looking very encouraging, both very similar as it turns out, but pricing is a lot different. So, Councillor Jackson. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just had a question that kind of hangs off this point of interest. Does Council run a quality system management um, or just the individual like Dr. Andrew and Council systems? There's um, some form under the RNCC loan. Um, not, not, um, not uh, uh, contractually. Contracts would be done to be to a certain level of quality assurance, safety assurance, and environmental, mm -hmm. but not as if we are ISO accredited in ourselves. Thank you. Any further comments, questions regarding item three with the division manager, finance administration report, and changing to works? <coughs> and we'll put that all those in favour. Yes. Carry. The report of the general uh, the division manager of engineering services regarding item one, works progress reports pertaining to roads. To have the group the recommendation that the motion should be noted, Councillor Whiteley is moved, second and Councillor McCoskey. Councillor Whiteley. Uh, I defer to the division manager Sylvester to comment where he needs. Mr. Mayor, um, our focus has been on um, uh, flood and network and RMC. So today is practically the last day for ADRN 960. Uh, the deadline is 30 March. Uh, so we cause that problem. Uh, we've applied for an extension of time to, uh, to finish off the, the road projects there that we haven't. Um, that's page two that we haven't fully expanded. 
So we see how we do that. Um, that nine hundred ninety one thousand dollar figure there will change slightly uh, uh, today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, when we post this problem, we we focus on other jobs that never have bothered or uh, we continue with RMCC to do something with uh, jobs along the highway and, and at Iwanama uh, West Depot and also do some maintenance as well while we await um, approval of uh, the hearing and the reform. And some questions there. Just to go that, a couple of questions, Mr. Mayor. What? IGN 960 you say is on what dates technically today. Just in the Rose Committee meeting, we alluded there's a couple of items in that works program where they're, they're overexpended. Did anything, was anything found out as to whether that's a true and accurate reflection on the cost or was something not cost? Mind you, there's still a quarter of a million dollars in that budget to be expended or given extensions to spend. Was there any investigation to find out, hypothetically, say, Miracle Road, 63,000, but we spent 97? Caitlin's Road, 37, but we spent 71. The likes of those ones are the way over. Are they true and accurate, the expense against the budget? Is the mayor there true and accurate expense? Uh, so, as discussed in the cross community meeting, uh, whatever is over the upper limit of the, um, of the funding there will go to make that happen. You see, you look at the first page, there's a fair amount of money. You yes. just need to make sure then the other roads are less expenditure we keep for our other yeah, so you make sure you're there, there, to and fro. Yeah. Just another question on that. I noticed in the works program, or the works that have been completed, we've got three graders in the northern reaches of the site, all doing like grading flood, grading flood, spreading gravel, up Billy Bing Bone, lamps and knots. Are all those crews camped up there? Uh, there are two crews up there. Uh, big, big bond, uh, there was some extra damage uh, apart from the flight that you had been fixed there. So two of the crews are camped at the campsite in weather? Yeah. And one of the crews was travelled? Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, one of the crews is doing uh, flight at the rock. Uh, I believe they are on uh, the knots. Yep. Knots lane or... Uh, um, uh, yeah, knots lane. Yeah, but I suppose the point of the question is you've got essentially nine blokes up there, but you can only accommodate six at the camp. So one of the crews must be travelling with it. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, only one crew is Only one, one crew can. Two travel. Two travel. Just in So tell me how close do you think you'll get to the one two five two so I go back to AGA analysis? How close will you get to extending that work? How much do you think we're asking for an extension for the problem question in terms of dollars? No, I think we initially ask for a little more, but I think I believe uh what we think we have probably be less than twenty dollars. Comments, questions regarding item one of the Division of Maintenance and Engineering Service report pertaining to roads. Nothing further, we'll put that all those in favour. It's carried. Item two, Division of Maintenance and Engineering Service report, Town Services. I'm happy to move the recommendation. Councillor McCoskey, happy to move. Second, Councillor Jackson, Councillor McCoskey. No, I just. Um... 
with regulation and the energy of, of uh, engineering might like to comment if you please speak. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, this really uh, nothing to add. Um, we, we have uh, spoken about the LED lighting and the power uh, topic, and uh, in my report there is asterisk. Four meter at what's the part of the process. It's a uh, practice. So just waiting for uh, installation. Uh, and our, our contractor. Yes, that's in the one. Yes, yes. Yes, no Just one minute for one, Smith. With regards to the, the, the evaporation pond that's yet to be built at the new sewage treatment works. It says here we're waiting on the geotech results for the excavated soil. Were there no geotech results or tests done for the initial work out there at all? Like back when it first started that could or couldn't be used here? Is that not possible? Or? Just voluntarily making sure that it could be used for the embankment. Plus, plus, I believe is doing some more testing to make sure that we haven't got a bottom that leaks or how much we need to actually make sure that it doesn't leak. Any, any further comments, questions regarding item two? Did you make the new search report? Answer. And further put that all those in favour against the code. Item 3, the works progress report pertaining to the fleet and the workshop. We have to move to that, please. Thank you, Councillor Bruce. Happy to move. Second. Councillor Jackson. Councillor Bruce. Just Questions? Councillor Gordon, sorry, I wasn't looking up. I asked a question at the previous meeting, and I noticed we've still got new readings on the Oxford Park ball. Is this still not working, not working in the meter? Five minutes, we just talked about. Yeah, but... <coughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I was off with the pixies. There's no, there's no five minutes. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might have sneaked in very small writing, so you will miss it. <laughs> but, that's the reason why it's no problem. Just, just on that subject, we got that, that's a quote, 15 grand for that, for a macro, for that. Yeah, I think we moved on from that yeah. on, so yeah. we discussed that one, just the one. Um, but you're very, very welcome to yeah. all the visual management services just to confirm that. <laughs> Thank you, we're on item three, the works progress report pertaining to the fleet and workshop. Any comments, questions regarding that particular item? Councillor Lawson. That's probably the smallest one we've had for some time. Are you Mr. Mayor? No, it's, it, it, it's just pleasing Councillor about you that we've, uh, well, it's a shortened list, yes. It's only until the 5th of March. It'll be a big one at the next one. There's a few items planned. So. Getting the care. That's really unique. I also noticed a comment that the um, workshop for water in the, in the top one testing diagnosis for repairs, water pump required as it may be part of a smoking issue. <laughs> so I would assume it was hiding something else. <laughs> something beyond that. Um, and he might have, Mr. Mayor, he might have found that it's only maybe that we've got a trouble 
Yeah, he's actually done a bit more investigation. We're actually hoping that that um, doesn't need a rebuild. This is the old one. The old one. And it's nice just to have it every so often do little ones here and there. Any better comments, questions, information, sort of guardian, something for it? As we put that, or oh, sorry, Captain. That wasn't a question. No, no, no. I was just going to put it that in case we will put that all as in favour against Carrie. No, no, no. Thank you, Justin. We've got a report of the Manager of Health and Development Services, the first of those that developed an application approval. Someone had to move that. It's been said, no, thank you. Councillor Jackson had to move. Second, Councillor Bruce. Councillor Jackson. Thank you. Any questions? We'll put that. All those in favour? Against? Gary, moving on to item two, pertaining to the works progress report and the management health and development. So I'm going to move the recommendation and information to be received and noted. Thank you, Councillor Whiteley. Move that second, Councillor Jackson, Councillor Whiteley. Yeah, I move the recommendation and uh, General Manager wishes to comment in that. Uh, let's find at the top of page five. We'll sit there for a while. The money will be set aside for something in the future on the back of the infrastructure reserve. Um, um, I think uh, we'll manage health development and infrastructure project managers now that um, infrastructure project managers back from holidays is, is working with um, Marianne at the Ranger for the project planning of that uh, new, new town. The solar panel installation in the middle of page five will have to we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see what we're going to do when we've got a new building and put it on top. Hopefully a chance that we'll be, I'm hoping that the Victoria because the Victoria Oval Park permanent scoreboard is now in the hands of the rugby club and they might need a bit of help with it. I'm, I hope that they have it ready and done for the Saturday the sixth big uh, challenge day this time. And um, some savings in that retaining wall at the bottom of page five, and that's what I think has gone to help. One of the projects has gone to help to help with the CCTV camera extra. And, uh, and the one at the bottom, of the, the top of page six is the one that stays. Carter Oval is in engineering, that's the one that's gone most probably to the uh, CCTV extras. As the hopefully as the um, heavy patching uh, heavy patching crew gets to town and finishes, we go in and do the uh, the uh, the earthworks that um, you know, I think you know, waste it, right? much cheaper than contractors. Thank you. Any further questions, comments? Regarding item two, the main talk and development support pertaining to the works progress. I can further put that all over the paper. It's carried. On 10, we have no notice of motion or questions with notice. Councillors, on 11, is matters of urgency. Are there any matters of urgency that councillors wish to raise? Nothing there. We have no confidential matters. This is why we plead to be followed. 